Hey guys, welcome to Juicy Tea, where I read out the best stories on Reddit so you don't have to. The funny, shocking, and satisfyingly juicy. Today is Fake or Real Thursday, with the craziest stories that just can't be real. That guy derails campaign to seduce his in real life sister. Today's story comes from the best of Reddit or update subreddit, posted by RPG Horror Stories. So, I play D&D with a group of people that I've more or less known since high school and college. The DM was one of my best friends since we were 14. Most of us are guys, but there are two girls, the guy's sister, Paladin, and my high school friend, Ranger. There were three other guys at the table, that guy, Fighter, and Barbarian. I'm just going to refer to most of these people by their class since there's no way in hell I'm using real names. Anyway, we hadn't played D&D in a while because of the pandemic, and even afterwards, we all had kind of hectic schedules because of school and work. That guy's sister and Barbarian were still in college. But a couple of months ago, we decided to run a homebrew campaign that was supposed to be like a mix between Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings. The campaign was supposed to be very dark, and I was excited. Well, we get to session one, and that guy's sister introduces us to him. He was her older brother, and clearly socially awkward. He always seemed like the younger brother, despite being seven years older, but he seemed like a good guy, at first. So, we get into the game, and we start to see red flags with this guy almost immediately. He was constantly threatening NPCs, even going so far as to murder a random dro. He is supposedly a lawfully good wizard, but he claims that murdering this dro is a lawfully good act because dro are an evil race by definition. If that's his reasoning, wouldn't that make him chaotic good? <laughs> okay, I have to admit, I've also murdered a few innocent NPCs, but I was playing a chaotic evil character, so it actually made sense. This was blatantly untrue in our campaign, but he went all rules lawyer on us when we tried to tell him this. He also saves the body parts of the NPCs and creatures he or the party kills, including the testicles. He would also constantly flirt with Paladin, his sister's character. We just kind of assumed it was his character's decision, and she pretty much just went along with it. We didn't question it too much until the dumb level 1 wizard with no armor attempted to block an effing firebolt to defend his full HP paladin sister who is a whole level above him. So he obviously effing dies. Almost the whole party got killed because of this and we ended up barely being able to flee the encounter and left him to the ogre thinker to kill him. He then rolls an artificer and surprise surprise he's basically the exact same character except he dropped the pretense of being lawfully good and just went full murder hobo. <laughs> Wait, killing people for their testes isn't lawfully good? His flirtation with Paladin intensified until he died again and again, playing the same Paladin loving murder hobo over and over. He even got to the point where he would basically murder anyone who even spoke to her. At this point, we started thinking this is just getting weird. How many characters can go through before the whole it's what my character would do excuse stops working for hitting on your own sister? We ended up having a little talk with him about his characters and tried to gently steer him into playing something different or flirting with another character. He got really defensive and pissy and basically gave us the whole that's what my character would do excuse. We didn't want to push this or cause any more problems so we just let it go. Well, he kept on escalating until he was making sexual comments about her character. Sexual content is fine in our game, but the context was making this increasingly weird. Eventually, he made a comment that was clearly related to her in real life appearance, not the character. So we ended up messaging her to ask if she wants us to kick him out, but she said no. Her response was that he's just really into the roleplay and he really likes you guys too. Yeah, because mildly murdering every NPC that mildly annoys him is top quality roleplay. This story doesn't have a dramatic ending with the problem player going full incel and getting kicked out or anything. 
But this wouldn't be in best of Redditor updates for no reason. We're pretty much just playing with that guy and trying to keep him from murdering too many important NPCs and ignoring him when he occasionally tries to, badly, be an obnoxious rule lawyer or he on his sister's character. Thankfully, the DM has basically caught on and most of his shenanigans just lead to him dying. He is now a full three levels behind the rest of the party and we pretty much just go into combat as if he's not even there. Too long didn't read. Socially awkward that guy plays murder hobo that dies constantly due to his own dumb decisions and won't stop hitting on his sister's character. He also is a really bad rules lawyer when he thinks the rules suit him. He is now three levels behind the rest of the party due to constantly dying and is pretty much useless in combat. Update. I posted here a couple of months ago about a cringe lord with no social skills and a very weird playstyle. I won't go into too much detail, but he was basically an edgelord murder hobo who had a bad habit of trying to seduce his sister's character. He was cringe, but we ended up letting him stay since his sister didn't seem bothered. And the DM, to his credit, was good about letting his antics mostly just affect him. I, he died a lot and suffered the penalty of our game's punitive leveling system. The next few months were more or less the same, until he seemed to get bored of acting like an idiot and getting himself killed so often. He was now playing a warlock who had a genuinely compelling backstory. I think he really liked this one, cause it'd been six sessions and he'd managed to keep himself alive. Hell, even our ranger died, albeit in a noble sacrifice kind of way, during those six weeks. Because he was being a genuinely productive player, even if still edgy, we gave him an opportunity to regain some of his lost XP and levels. However, he was still obsessed with hitting on Paladin, his sister's character. Well, fast forward to a few days ago, and our problem player decided to bring a case of White Claws. It was kind of weird since he never mentioned anything about alcohol and nobody at the table drinks and plays D&D as we pretty much figured out a long time ago that just makes the game much stupider. But we let him have his drinks. That was a mistake. By this point, we were gearing up to fight the big boss's secret servant who was masquerading as the king's visor, advisor. He was an extremely powerful lynch type homebrewed villain, so we had to be ready in order to avoid being wiped out, cause this DM legit pulls no punches. Which we like, we prefer the challenge of trying to stay alive and the fact that our actions have consequences. Well, it wouldn't be much of a Game of Thrones world if none of the main characters ever died, <laughs> and there was no incest. Anyway, we're in the Underdark to keep from his sight as we prepared to sneak into his castle directly from the Underdark, basically by climbing. By this time, our warlock was starting to get drunk. He was being super loud and coming up with just really stupid ideas on how to deal with the visor. Typical D&D stuff. But then, he switched the conversation to how sexy Paladin's character looked in her new golden armor. Paladin just told him the same thing that she told all of his overly flirtatious characters. Paladin's character has a husband and kids, and she's lawfully good and would never betray him. She didn't seem bothered in real life, just amused, as if her older brother is a child begging her for a cookie that he knows he can't have. But the evening progressed and we fought a few underdark monsters as Warlock got drunker and drunker in real life. Even our fighter commented out a game for him to take it easy, which he didn't do. We just figured at least he had a designated driver and kept going. Once we set up camp, Warlock was legit hammered and so his character went to Paladin's camp and told her in explicit detail how much he wanted to bang her. Paladin basically just told him in character that she'll never betray her boyfriend or her god, so get the F out. So obviously, he decides to kill her god, like any sane player would do. He then casts Plane Shift to the Fey Wild. Her god watches over the Fey Wild. And then casts Meteor Swarm to just decimate it. The DM had him roll to see how devastating it was, and he rolled a nat 20. 
So DM basically let him launch a dinosaur extinction level meteor at the Fey Wild. A weird decision by the DM, IMO. Makes Meteor Swarm feel a bit too OP, but I guess that he felt the Fey Wild wasn't too important to the campaign. However, his actions incurred the wrath of her god. Her god confronted him and demanded he answer for his crimes against her realm. He basically went back to his full aggro murder hobo self and tried to fight the god with an admittedly impressive array of spells, but unsurprisingly, he got his butt handed to him. He died, no death saves, nothing. He basically got smoked by an actual god. There was no way he was coming back from that. He then started demanding death saves, but the DM refused. So, he went off on how he was biased and all of that. Dude, you tried fighting a literal god! It was shocking! He never seemed to care about a character that much. The DM then asked him what he expected to happen after challenging a god. He said he was gonna kill him with his dimensional spells and that even gods aren't immune to reality warping powers and a bunch of other BS. He then admitted he was basically trying to kill this god to seduce Paladin Again, his sister. He thought if her god was dead, then she wouldn't have to worry about breaking her oaths if she banged him. She then started laughing and made a somewhat weird comment about how he wouldn't be big enough anyway. He was playing a goblin, so the comment sort of made sense. And he, being as drunk as he was, decided it was a good idea to get butt hurt and say, Is this big enough for you f -slurs? And then he whipped out his penis and slammed it onto the table. Now, we'd put up with quite a bit of this guy's antics, including him being a weirdo. But obviously, this crossed the line. We all started yelling at him and calling him a pervert and telling him to get the F out. And his sister literally slapped him. She apologized to us for his behavior and demanded that he get into the car. Again, he was too drunk to drive. She profusely apologized to us over and over, and we tried to reassure her and ask her if she'd prefer for one of us to take him. But she said no, it's okay, he just acts like a total f-wad whenever he's drunk. That's why I usually don't let him drink. <laughs> what is their relationship? She then left and took him home. Obviously, we called it a night after talking about what just happened and eventually just laughing at the absurdity. And now, it's been a few days later, and the a-hole decides to text us a long apology on the group chat, basically saying he's really sorry, he has no idea why he would do something like that, and that he rarely drinks, and he promises he'll never drink again if we let him back in. We actually decided to take a break from D&D after that, since the DM was going out of town anyway. Apparently, his sister does legitimately think he should be given another chance because of how sorry he is and how much he really likes playing with us. She even promised us that she is personally holding him accountable for staying sober and won't let him bring a single alcoholic beverage or mind-altering substance to our D&D sessions ever again. The DM and other players said, we'll talk about it when the DM gets back. I feel like we're total idiots for even considering it, but part of me sees him as basically a socially stunted man-child who needs friends to kind of guide him a bit. And despite everything, we did come to see him as a friend. Also, we want to respect her wishes, since she's the one who has to deal with him way more than we do. So I know the vast majority of you guys will say kick him out, and for good reason, but does anyone think there's any valid argument for letting him stay? Provided he understands that he crossed some major boundaries. Too long didn't read. Our problem player, slash murder hobo, slash manchild, slash sister lusterer got hammered, acted like an idiot the whole game, and ended it by whipping out his penis and slamming it on the table. He apologized and now wants to play with us again. <laughs> Hell no! Remember, I post new content every day, so subscribe for more juicy tea.